Lewis Hamilton is getting sick of Max Verstappen's success, but recent information has revealed that he talked to Christian Horner about getting himself in a Red Bull uniform not just once, but multiple times. How close was the Mercedes star from jumping ship as soon as the Silver Arrows weren't contending for a title? Let's find out in today's video. Having gone through years of dominance at Mercedes following the introduction of the hybrid era in Formula 1, Hamilton believes that Red Bull is starting to get a bit too used to winning. He picks up on this sentiment through snippets of conversation on the team radio. He told Channel 4, When you have so much success, no matter how hard you try, it's hard to keep things in perspective. I even hear it in Christian Horner's voice when Max wins. He doesn't know what to say. He's like, here we go again. Good job, Max. Good job. The excitement goes, but when you first get that win, it's amazing. But if you have it all the time, he added, I think through adversity and through this experience for two years, I feel like I've learned a huge amount as a driver, not necessarily on track, but particularly off track in terms of how I engage with everyone. And I like to think that's a real positive. Hamilton says that negatively, but as it turns out, he wanted a slice of the pie as well. In a shocking confession, Christian Horner revealed that Lewis Hamilton has engaged in discussions with Red Bull on multiple occasions, with the most recent talks occurring earlier this year, just before the Mercedes driver finalised a new contract with his current team. Although Hamilton inked a fresh agreement in August to extend his stay with the Silver Arrows for a minimum of the next two seasons, Red Bull boss Horner has made the sensational assertion that the seven-time world champion genuinely explored his options elsewhere before ultimately committing to Mercedes. As per Horner, this involved Hamilton's representatives reaching out to Red Bull to explore the possibility of a groundbreaking partnership with his arch-title rival Max Verstappen. Horner shared this insight in an interview with the Daily Mail. He said, We have had several conversations over the years about Lewis joining. They've reached out a few times. Most recently, earlier in the year, there was an inquiry about whether there would be any interest. But I can't see Max and Lewis working out together. The dynamic wouldn't be right. We are 100% happy with what we have. Horner also noted that there were serious discussions between Hamilton and Ferrari this year. He went as far as to suggest that these conversations were ongoing as late as May. He added, He met John Elkin, Ferrari chairman too. I think there were serious talks. It was around Monaco in May. There were definitely conversations, perhaps with Vasseur too, but certainly with Elkin. At the beginning of the year, Lewis Hamilton emphasised what he perceived as a less formidable lineup of Red Bull drivers that Max Verstappen has had to contend with over the years. Perhaps he thought he could be the one to truly challenge Verstappen. Hamilton shared these thoughts with Sky F1. I'm no more impressed than when Michael Schumacher was leading, when Sebastian Vettel was leading, when Kimi Raikkonen was driving, when Fernando was winning. It's just the same. I think the Red Bull team as a whole is one of the strongest. They're firing on all cylinders right now. The car is incredible. The drivers are doing an amazing job, very consistent. The pit crew is doing a great job. The mechanics are doing a great job. Strategy is doing a good job. On point, you can't fault them. In my personal opinion, all my teammates have been stronger than the teammates Max has had. Jensen, Fernando, George, Valtteri, Nico, I've had so many. These guys have all been very, very strong, very consistent and Max has not raced against anyone like that. But is Sir Lewis the right choice? Or should Red Bull look at the other side of the Mercedes garage for answers? F1 pundit Peter Windsor expresses concern that Lewis Hamilton might no longer be willing to push himself to the absolute limit, contrasting this with the apparent fearlessness of his Mercedes teammate George Russell. Windsor suggests that a perceived lack of bravery may have been a factor in Hamilton's performance at the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Mercedes faced yet another demanding weekend during F1's return to Las Vegas after four decades. George Russell qualified impressively in third place, while Lewis Hamilton faced elimination in Q2. Despite encountering a puncture due to a collision with Oscar Piastri, Hamilton made a strong comeback, securing a seventh-place finish. Notably, he finished one place ahead of Russell, who had a brush with race winner Max Verstappen. Sharing his perspective on his YouTube channel, Peter Windsor, the title-winning team manager from 1992, highlighted the crucial distinction in qualifying between the two drivers. Windsor noted that George Russell demonstrated a greater willingness to take risks on the high-speed street circuit compared to the 38-year-old Hamilton. He elaborated, saying, 
If you want to watch any driver in Vegas who would give you sweaty palms, it would be George Russell. Absolutely on top of that Mercedes in a way. Sadly, I don't think Lewis Hamilton could ever do now. He was full of enthusiasm for this circuit and he actually used the phrase, it's going to be really good for racing and DRS. I'm wondering if he's regretting saying that now because this circuit is just about straights, DRS and, if you like from Lewis's perspective, it's about bravery. Concrete walls everywhere, high speed braking. Lewis just couldn't get the best from the tyres on his warm up laps and his push laps. And it was sad to see because obviously it's a pretty good car around here. I'm not saying it's as good as Red Bull, but that was a very good lap from George Russell. Absolutely on the edge, and Lewis, quite rightly, I think, for a seven-time world champion, was not prepared to do that. Because unlike other circuits this year where there have been tyre temperature issues, Monaco and Barcelona spring to mind, there aren't any corners in Vegas where a driver like Lewis can actually start playing around with what he does with the car. Maybe slightly longer corners, maybe break a little bit later, get a bit more energy in the car when you're loaded up. There isn't any way you can do that in Vegas. And that's where he was struggling because it's all about braking from high speed and making sure you get the car into the chicane and get a decent exit. With that being said, Max Verstappen seems to be aware of the threat that is George Russell, given the extra aggression from him when tangling with the driver from Kings Lynn. While battling with Charles Leclerc for the lead on the opening lap, Verstappen received a five-second time penalty for forcing the Ferrari driver off the track. Leclerc said that Verstappen's manoeuvres were pushing the boundaries, stating that the penalty was fair. But he also mentioned a preference for the stewards instructing Verstappen to relinquish the lead to him. On the other side, Verstappen adopted a sarcastic tone, telling his race engineer Gian Piero Lambiase to convey his regards to the stewards. Eventually, he conceded that the penalty was probably the right call. Former F1 driver Robert Duenbos believes that Verstappen was aware of the potential penalty if the stewards deemed him at fault. He suggests that Verstappen chose not to give the position back, taking what Duenbos described as the arsehole route. This perspective was shared by the Dutchman with Motorsport.com. The stewards don't want to be the ones to impose the penalty. They want to let the driver make the decision. And there was a moment for Max to do that, but then the adrenaline was still quite high and he was convinced that the corner was his. You don't give back that track position. You know, being nice doesn't make you world champion. You also have to be a bit of an arsehole sometimes. This was just one of two penalty decisions involving Verstappen during the race. The second incident occurred later in the race and involved George Russell. Verstappen and the Mercedes driver collided as the reigning world champion made a move on the inside at turn 12. This resulted in Verstappen losing parts of his front wing and Russell receiving a five-second time penalty for causing the collision. Duenbos said, To begin with, it was quite a big blow, but Russell didn't see it at all. He didn't expect him there at all. And at one point, I noticed that he let go of the brake a little. That, he thinks, there is going to be a crash now, it is inevitable, and then I will just drive into it. So, did Max Verstappen intentionally drive into George Russell? You tell me in the comment section down below. And, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.